you mentioned the matrix. Hmm. Do you think we're living in a simulation? It does feel like a thought game more than a real scientific question. Well, I'll tell you why. Like, I think it's an interesting thought experiment. See what you think from okay. a computer science perspective. It's a good experiment of how difficult would it be to create a sufficiently realistic world that us humans would enjoy being in. It, it, that That's almost like I mean, a If we're living in a simulation, then I don't believe that we were put in the simulation. I believe that the, it's just physics playing out and we came out of that. Like I don't, I don't, I don't think. So you think you have to build the universe? I and think the, all the, the universe itself. We can think of that as a simulation. And in fact, what I try sometimes I try to think about to understand what it's like for a computer to start to think about the world. I try to think about the world. Um, things like quantum mechanics, where it doesn't feel very natural to me at all, um, and it really strikes me as. I don't understand this thing that we're living in. It, it has, there's weird things happening in it that don't feel natural to me at all. Now, if you want to call that as the result of a simulator, okay, I'm fine with that. But like, I so don't- There's the bugs in the simulation. There's the bugs. I mean, the interesting thing about <laughs> simulation is that it, it might have bugs. I mean, that that's the thing that I- the, the But there wouldn't the be bugs for life. the people in the simulation. They're just, that's just reality. Unless you were bugged. aware enough to know that there was a bug, but I, I think back you know, to the matrix. Yeah, the way you put <laughs> the question. I don't though. think that we live in a in a simulation created for us. I, okay, I would say that. I think that's interesting. I've actually never thought about it that way. I mean, it, you the way you asked the question though is, you know, could you create a world that is enough for us humans? It's an interestingly sort of self referential question because the beings that created the simulation probably have not created the simulation that's realistic for them, but we're in the simulation, and so it's realistic for us. So we could create a simulation that is fine for the people in the simulation, as it right. were, that would not necessarily be fine for us as the creators of the simulation. But, well, you can you can forget, I Maybe. mean, if when you go into the, if you play video games in virtual reality, you can, if it was some suspension of disbelief yeah. or, or whatever. Yeah. Uh, it becomes you, a world. It becomes yeah. the world, even like in brief moments, you, you forget that another world exists. Hmm. I mean, that's what like good stories do, they pull you in. Hmm. The question is, is it possible to pull, you know, our brains are limited. Is it possible to pull the brain in to where we actually stay in that world longer and longer and longer and longer? And like, not only that, but we don't want to leave. And so, especially this is the key thing about the de developing brain is if we journey into that world early on in life, often. How would you even know? Yeah. Yeah, so I, I but like from a video game design perspective, from a Westworld perspective, it's, I think, I think it's an important thing for even uh, computer scientists to think about because it's clear that video games are getting much better. And virtual reality, although it's been ups and downs, just like artificial intelligence, it feels like virtual reality will be here in a very impressive form if we were to fast forward 100 years into the future in a way that might change society fundamentally like if i were to i'm very limited in predicting the future as all of us are mm -hmm. but if i were to try to predict like in which way i'd be surprised to see the world 100 years from now it'd be that or impressed it'd be that we're all no longer living in this physical world that we're all living in a virtual world you really need to read calculating god by sawyer it's a he'll he'll read it in a night. It's a very easy read, but it's a, as, assuming you're that kind of reader. But it's a it's a good story, and it's kind of about this, but not in a way that it appears. And I uh, really enjoyed the thought experiment. Um, yeah, I think it's pretty sure it's Robert Sawyer. But anyway, he's he's apparently Canadian's top science fiction writer, which is why the story mostly takes place in Toronto. Uh, but it's a it's a very good uh, it's a very good sort of story that that sort of. Uh, imagines this very different kind of simulation hypothesis sort of thing from say um the egg for example you know you know i'm talking about the short story um by the guy who did the martian who wrote the martian mm -hmm. you know what I'm talking the martian about. matt damon no nope. <laughs> the book so we had this whole discussion that michael doesn't uh doesn't partake in this exercise of reading yeah, he doesn't seem to like it which seems very strange to me considering how much he has to read yeah. I read all the time. I used to read 
10 books at every week when I was a, when I was in sixth grade or whatever. I was a lot of it science fiction, a lot of it, a lot of it history, but I, I love to read. But anyway, you should read Calculating God. I think you'll, you'll, it's very easy to read, like I said, and I think you'll enjoy sort of the ideas that it presents. Yeah, I think the the thought experiment is, is quite interesting. Uh, w one thing I've noticed about people growing up now, I mean, we, we talk about social media, but video games is a much bigger, bigger and bigger and bigger part of their lives. And, mm -hmm. the, and the video games have become much more realistic. I think it's possible that the three of us are not, uh, and maybe the two of you are not familiar exactly with the numbers we're talking about here. I think I, the but, number of people. No, it's bigger than movies, right? It's its its huge. I used to do a lot of the narrative, uh, computational narrative stuff. I understand that economists can actually see the impact of video games on the labor market. That, that there are, there there's fewer young men of a certain age participating in like paying jobs than you'd expect. And and that they trace it back to video games. I mean, the problem with Star Trek was not warp drive or teleportation; it was the holodeck. Mm. Like, if you have the holodeck, that's it. <laughs> you just, that's it. You go in the holodeck, you never come out. I yeah. mean, it just never made. Once I saw that, I thought, okay, well, so this is the end of humanity as we know it, right? They've invented the holodeck because that feels like the singularity, not some AGI or whatever. It's some possibility to go into another world mm. that can be artificially made better than this one. Mm -hmm. And slowing it down so you live forever, or speeding it up so you appear to live forever, or making the decision of when to die. And then m most of us will just be old people on the porch yelling at the kids these days in their virtual reality mm -hmm. worlds. <laughs> but they won't hear us because they've got headphones on. <laughs>